Hi, my name is Tori Morgan, and I'm a postdoctoral research associate in the Department of Civil Environmental Engineering at the University of Illinois. And today I'm going to show you how to do a fluorescent science experiment at home using carbon quantum dots. Carbon quantum dots are nano-sized particles made from a carbon source that when a light is sh uh, shined on the solution, it emits fluorescence. And so to make these at home, we're going to use a carbon source, first of all, which can be any sugar. I'm using brown sugar. Um, you can also use honey, that works as well. And you can play around with the different carbon sources that you might have on hand, whether it's maple syrup, agave syrup, corn syrup, white sugar, coconut sugar, go crazy and try all the sugars. And then the next thing you'll need for um, the carbon quantum dots is a surfactant. So this can be Windex or it can also be borax. Um, the other things you will need for this experiment is you'll need something to measure out. So I have a measuring cup um, where I can fill up to the 100 mil mark. And then I have a quarter teaspoon so I can measure out my surfactant and carbon source. You'll also need some type of heating source. I'll be using a microwave, but you can use a stove. Um, just make sure you're careful and that you have adult supervision if you need so. And then the last thing you will need um, besides a glass, which you'll want a thin glass that's non-textured, the thinner, the better for fluorescence. And then you'll need a light source. This can be any blue or green light. Um, although how bright that light is will affect your fluorescence. So if it's not a very bright light, such as like a small LED bulb, you'll have a very faint fluorescence. I'm using an LED flashlight, um, a UV flashlight that I purchased offline but I know not everyone has that at home. So if you have a blue green um, laser that you could buy at the store, that will work. Or if you happen to have one on hand, some type of UV source, you can use that. You cannot use a red light because red has a long wavelength, which means they'll have short energy. And because it has the small energy, it won't be enough energy to create emittance from those carbon quantum dots. And if you want to learn more about fluorescence and why that happens, or about nanotechnology and carbon quantum dots, I put some resources below that you can check out. I created a worksheet for this experiment that you could do along with it to learn more about nanotechnology, specifically um, with a focus in environmental engineering, but I also included examples in medicine and electronics and more. And then if you want to look at other videos, I've attached some that are um, some links below that were helpful for me. There's one cool video that I think is by an alien on fluorescence, so feel free to check that out. And if you have any um, findings that you want to report, feel free to do so in the comments or other videos that you find helpful so that we can all learn together. So with that said, let's make some fluorescent nanoparticles. So the first thing you'll want to do is add your sugar. The sugar to surfactant ratio is two to one. At least that's what worked well for me, but maybe you'll want to do some experiments to see what is the best ratio of your um, carbon source to your surfactant source. So I'm going to do, um, I have a quarter teaspoon, so I'm gonna do one quarter teaspoon of my brown sugar. And then I'm going to do a second one to get that two to one ratio. So normally we would be using um, in a lab like a weight scale or pipetting for the liquid, but we're at home, so we're using um, these measuring spoons. Then I'll want to add a quarter teaspoon of my surfactant. So I'm adding the Windex now. And then we'll want to add um, water up to that 100 mil mark. So it's up to the 100 mil and we're going to stir it. Again, in a lab, we would have some fancy equipment that kind of does this for us called a vortex. Or if we wanted to separate the liquids and solids, um, we could have a centrifuge. And then once you've got that it's, the sugar is mostly dissolved, you can put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. If you're performing this on a stove, I would set it on um, in a something, a stove safe container on um, medium heat and try that for 30 seconds. You don't need too much heat. Um, be careful because if it's a container that's a closed container, the top will explode off. I actually did that first. 
um, with a container trying to use this little glass vial. And now we've got our carbon quantum dot solution. So what I'm going to take do next is I'm going to take this into the bathroom and turn the lights off to show you the fluorescence from the light. You'll want a very dark room. Um, the darker, the better it'll be to see the fluorescence and the brighter the light of your light source, the easier it'll be to see fluorescence. So let's go check it out. So now I'm going to show you the fluorescence of the carbon quantum dots. Again, I'm using a UV flashlight. Um, a laser beam is the best, but any type of blue uh, light will work. So I want to show you first with just plain water. So these don't have the sugar or surfactant in there. It's just plain H2O. You don't see anything. But then when we shine it on our carbon quantum dots, fluorescence is emitted. And you can see it's um, a green yellow fluorescence. It looks a little blue on the computer, but every um, carbon quantum dot has its own color fluorescence. So you can tailor the fluorescence to be red, orange, uh, blue, green, depending on the chemical structure of that solution. So the different carbon sources that you're using and so on. I also wanted to show you what it looks like if you use a red beam. So I'm actually using a cat laser and I'll show you first again with the water. So you don't really see the beam going through, but then with the carbon quantum dots because of the nanoparticles, you see the beam go through the solution. Um, and this isn't fluorescence because if it was fluorescence, it should be emitting that same color um, the beam is just able to go through the um, solution because of the nanoparticles. So the water did not have nanoparticles. You don't see a beam. The carbon quantum dots do. So you see this beam shine through. Another thing, cool thing could show is a deflection of the beam. So if you point that laser up, you can see how it bounces back off the surface. So that's just another cool scientific thing to explore is the deflection of the beam with the surface of the water. So I encourage you to try it with different light sources, different carbon sources, surfactants, and see what you get. And if you want to be a true scientist, you can report your findings. So I hope you enjoyed that experiment and that this is something that maybe teachers can do with their virtual classes or parents can do at home with their kids. Um, whether you're, you're a student, educated parent, I hope you have fun with this and can learn something. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help. And going forward, I'd just like you all to um, stay safe, be kind to one another, and go out and explore safely with science.